Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at a brand new model from Rapido. <music> Rapido are on fire at the moment. We've already seen a locomotive from them this year and there's possibly more of those to come before the end of the year. And they're also releasing quite a lot of rolling stock this year, hopefully too. And that is what I'm looking at today because today I have this. This is the all new Vix Ferry Van from Rapido. And these are essentially very long freight vans, but they don't run on bogies as most rolling stock of this length would. Note these have fixed axles on them, which really sets them apart. So that is a very brief summing up of what this thing is. If you're interested in more information, stay tuned, I will fill you in later on. So the price for this model on Rapido's website, the RRP, is £45.95. And I bought mine from Hattons, who offer a small discount at £39.06. And, and if you're interested in these, I've popped an affiliate link in the description for you. So in terms of value for money, yes, I would say this is a reasonably expensive model. But compared with some of Rapido's other offerings, I don't think it sounds too bad. For instance, any small Rapido open wagon costs £32.95 RRP. And then this gigantic van is just over a tenner more. So I don't know how it compares with other manufacturers' models. We'll figure that out. But in terms of what else Rapido offers, the value here seems to be quite good. But what I don't know is whether the features are good, whether the quality is good. That is what I'm going to figure out today. So join me. Let's see what the new Rapido Vix Ferry Van is like. And hopefully let's enjoy another brand new model from Rapido. Okay, here we go. So standard Rapido packaging with this, except the box is obviously a little bit longer and the model itself is still obscured by the packaging. So I've still not had a proper look at this yet. I'm going to do that in just a second. First of all, though, let me show you the end of the box. So the van I went for is 1 slash 227. It is a ferry van number B787170. The livery is BR Bauxite and the tops code for this one was RBX. And there is quite a bit of choice in terms of this ferry van from Rapido. So different liveries, different eras. If you are interested, check that out. Uh, I just thought this one looked nicest. I thought this would match the best with some of the other models I've got. So that's why I chose this. But let's see what this is like. Let's open it up. So it is a little bit less expensive than some of Rapido's offerings. But on the grand scheme of things, it's still relatively dear. So I'm still hoping that this will be an impressive model. And we've got some paperwork and also some accessories here. So let's have a look at these. So BR VIX Ferry Van, or VIX, I guess I shouldn't call it VIX. So this is quite impressive. We've actually got a little bit of information on the prototype here, which is quite rare to see with just a van or a piece of rolling stock. So that's great. That's extra attention to detail. And then we've got some actual instructions on the back. So it tells us what's inside the accessories bag, little list there, and it also shows their location if you'd like to fit those. I also like this down at the bottom. We've got a recipe basically for making a Rapido model. So it's not a lot of detail here, but it just gives you a basic idea of what's had to be done to produce the model. I guess this is a general thing. But yeah, that's quite nice just to give you a little window into the manufacturing process. All right, very nice. And let's have a look at the famous poly bag. So there we go, we've got the detailing here. This is really, really good to see. We've got proper articulating screw link couplings. Again, when you spend a lot of money on a wagon, this is the kind of detail that you expect to see and you don't always get it. So that's great. And then you've got a little bit of pipe work. As I say, all of this was explained on that little instruction leaf. So you know exactly what you're doing. So I would say this is a pretty good start. Yeah, we've got proper instructions, a few extra accessories and um, what looks like a pretty decent wagon from the outside. But I think what we need to do now is figure out what it's actually like. So let's pop the front of this blister off. Try not to scrape the model as I do so. Come on. Ooh, bit tight that. Okay, I think we got it. 
All right, so let's peel. Can I peel? No, let's pull the model out first then, and then I'll peel. Oh, yes. Oh, I tell you what. Let me get this in shot for you. Yeah, look at the finish on this. You've got a beautiful satin sheen on the top of the roof, and the body has a great finish as well. I'm not sure if these were wooden or sheet metal, but looking at this, I would say it's probably uh, sheet metal. And so the finish on that is really quite nice. And there's a fair bit of detail here. I was expecting this to be, you know, slightly more cheaply manufactured, perhaps, than the only slightly less expensive open wagon that I tried from Rapido. And yet, no, this seems to have a lot of detail on it, as well as its much larger size. So that's impressive. The underframe is absolutely insane. Look at that. When you see this level of detail, the price seems incredibly reasonable. Uh, we've got some nice metal wheels on here, and of course, kinematic couplings. Now, we haven't got bogies on here, so these couplings without the kinematics would be swinging out an awful long way on the curves. So the kinematics are going to be absolutely essential on this. But no, first impressions are very, very good for this. It looks marvellous. And we're going to take a much closer look at the level of detail in just a moment. But first of all, let's have a bit of background on the real ferry vans. In the 1950s and the 1960s, British Railways was in a bit of a mess. And that was because incoming goods from Europe were delivered on long wheelbase vans, which then had to be transferred to the rolling stock of British Railways, which mainly consisted of 10-foot wheelbase vans with very limited 12-ton capacity. To get around this severe logistical issue, British Railways commissioned the much longer VIX ferry vans, stretching 42 feet long as opposed to just 10 or a little bit more, including the van itself, and these were capable of carrying 20 tonnes. These would then be transported to and from the continent on train ferries and were now compatible for the first time with European freight systems. They didn't last dreadfully long though, because bogey vans would become a better solution than long fixed axle vans, and these vans kind of lost favour in the 1970s. That said though, a lot of these vans did remain on the network until quite recently, 2018 I think was when the last ones were withdrawn, so modern image modellers may even have a use for these vans as well. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the brand new ferry van from Rapido. And this is an expensive model from Rapido. It's perhaps not as expensive as some of Rapido's offerings, and it's not as expensive as I was expecting it to be based on Rapido's other offerings, but it still cost me about 40 quid. It's still a lot of money. But this time, Rapido have absolutely delivered value for that money. This is, in my opinion, a £40 wagon. The model reflects the price, the quality is here, the detail is here, and it has quite a few wow features as well. I'm really, really pleased with this one. So, wow features, the finish and the decoration is obviously great. We'll take a closer look at all of this in a second. But yeah, the satin finish is really clear and noticeable to see here. It does have the screw link couplings, proper good quality ones. So if you fit those to the model instead of these NEM couplings, it's going to be perfectly realistic. That is a great feature. It's also got sprung buffers. Yeah, look at that. How awesome is that? And you can even see the springs compressing through the buffer housing. Marvellous, marvellous attention to detail. And my favourite feature, which is this, the opening side door. And it does reveal a proper wooden floor inside. You can see we've got planking on there. No real interior detail besides that, but if you wanted to put some cargo inside there, that is a real possibility with this wagon. Yeah, it's got some fantastic features, and that's not to mention the absolutely marvellous level of detail. We've got separately fitted handrails on here, which is fantastic. I think those are made of metal. We've got all of the grab handles around the doors, which appear to be separately fitted as well. We've got these little steps on the chassis, and a lot of this stuff is made of metal, by the way. Loads of separately fitted detail along the sole bar, including all of the brake gear, little grab handles which have been picked out and decorated, wire details as well. You've got pressure tanks, full brake rigging on the bottom. Really nice, realistic looking axle boxes with full detail and brake pads as well. Yeah, the underframe is just exquisite. 
And if we take a look at the decoration, there's quite a lot of complexity here as well. There are lots and lots of prints on both the body and the chassis here. All of them high quality, as you can see, all nice and straight. And even the smaller ones seem to be legible as well. So that's really impressive. You've even got little details on the body picked out as well and very precisely picked out too so that they look almost like they could be separately fitted parts. The molded detail is good as well. The molding is nice and crisp as you can see, plenty of riveting on here too and the ends of the model are good in that regard as well. You've got lots of molded detail here. The riveting looks particularly good on the ends and there's more separately fitted detail here as well including these very fine separately fitted lamp brackets. So yeah, for just less than £40, I think you absolutely get what you pay for. As you can also tell, the build quality of this model is high as well. I cannot see any glue, and that is impressive because there is a lot going on here. There are a lot of details that are separately fitted. Some of them you wouldn't even necessarily notice were separately fitted, but I think they are. And yet it's perfectly clean and tidy. Everything's straight, everything's manufactured nicely. Really, really impressive. I think they have made one or two savings. I mean, the chassis slash sole bar, I believe, is just made of plastic here. And so it's a little bit on the light side at 83 grams. But having said that, this is just a two-axle van. That still puts around 20 grams on each wheel. That is absolutely plenty. Sure, they could have made the chassis die-cast. It would have made the model a little heavier. It would have felt perhaps a little bit better quality. But ultimately, I don't think it would have brought much in terms of improvements. So I don't really think the benefits of a die-cast chassis would have been really worth the money in this case. Also, some of Rapido's rolling stock does have proper bearings on the rolling axles. This one doesn't seem to, though. I think these just are the moulded plastic bearings. Again, that is absolutely fine. Very few manufacturers actually fit separate bearings into their rolling stock, and very few of them have problems. But that is just a noticeable downgrade over some of Rapido's other models, which did have that feature. Again, though, that is more than reflected in the price. So, visually, this model is superb. It's well decorated, it is well detailed, but how does it perform? I want to check how free rolling this is without the bearings and also with all the detail around the axles. And I also want to check these couplings. Are they at the right height? Do the kinematics work freely enough not to cause derailments? I suspect that yes, they do work properly, but we're going to have to figure it out. So let's get this down onto the track. So here is today's test setup. I've got all sorts of different rolling stock set up, roughly era correct for the most part, but I've also thrown some Rapido vans in there as well, since this is a Rapido review. For today's loco, I've got a Backman Class 25 in the BR Green, which looks very nice. And here is, of course, the ferry van, which I've parked between two very different pieces of rolling stock so that we can do a proper test of the couplings. In terms of how free rolling this is, it isn't great. This is actually the best take of this test I could get. And the reason is the brake pads and the brake rigging are just quite close to the wheels and on some of them they do touch. And this is something I see quite often. Obviously you want those brake pads to be nice and close to the wheels so that they are realistic. But the closer they are, the less room for error there is in the manufacturing and the assembly. And invariably when they are this close, you do sometimes get them touching. It is a decision the manufacturer has to make. Do they want it to run freely 100% of the time or do they want it to be more realistic? Well, I would say this one is more optimised for looking good rather than necessarily performing well. But then again, it's not stiff or anything. It's just not as free rolling as quite a lot of the rolling stock I look at. So do bear that in mind if you've got a lot of them. Pay attention to those brake pads if you can adjust them or perhaps bend them away a little bit. You might ease the load on your locomotives a little bit. But anyway, let's try a coupling. I think all of the coupling hooks are lined up properly. I'm going to make sure they are just so that this is as fair as possible. Let's see if this works. Into reverse. So we've got a, a modern Backman van there. On, yeah, on first glance, the coupling looks like it's at the perfect height and it did couple correctly. Let's couple up to a wall well then. Again, yep, perfect coupling. So coupling height, coupling hooks, 100% fine. Yep, both of them coupled perfectly there and the height seems to be spot on. What about around curves? How do those kinematics work? Well, let's find out. Let's go fairly speedily, about 50. 
let's see how it gets on. All right, here we go then, third radius curves to start with. Bit of a slowdown from the loco there, actually, interesting. In fact, a lot of a slowdown. That's odd, that loco is normally great. But no derailment from the ferry van there, so that looks good. And it certainly does look good, doesn't it? I think when it's in motion like this, the quality of the decoration, the quality of the finish, and also the level of the detail really stand out for the world to see. It really does look like a tremendous piece of rolling stock, and I am surprised by how detailed this is. I thought, hmm, this is a little bit cheaper than a lot of Rapido's offerings. Maybe this is gonna be more of a budget option, but if anything, the opposite is true. This is one of the most detailed Rapido models I've looked at. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm very happy with this. As you can see, it works very, very well on the whole. The value is great and the quality is top notch as well. So this is a great piece of rolling stock. Let's try it on the points. I did take those Hornby Siphon G wagons off because the couplings are so old and outdated they were causing problems. So we've just got modern rolling stock for this test. Uh, let's open up the points. Let's back it in fairly in a fairly lively way. Obviously, if anything else derails, it's not the fault of the Vix ferry van. Yeah, we have got problems on the back of the train there. Annoying. But the ferry van... 100% perfect across the points. All right, very impressive. Let's have some ratings then for this fantastic model. The level of detail has to be five star because I can't fault it. It's got a lot of impressive features here. The decoration and the finish are top notch. The decoration's very, very complex. A lot of print work here for a 40 pound wagon. Love that. On top of that, it's got loads of extra accessories you can fit, including the proper screw link couplings. You've got sprung buffers, the opening door, which gives you so many opportunities as a modeler. And of course, the insane number of separately fitted details, which are factory fitted to the model. The performance is really perfect, except that it's not that free rolling, so I've given it four star. The couplings work exactly as they should, the kinematics are nice and smooth, they don't cause any derailments or anything like that, and the weight of the wagon is enough so that it's stable, but not so much that it's going to cause locos to struggle. Not that free rolling, like I say, we have got details touching the wheels, which isn't great. If not for that, it would have been an easy five star. The quality, again, is really high. The build quality is good. You've got no glue visible, no hiccups that I could see, at least in the decoration either. The only thing I would knock down on the quality is the plastic construction. I do that every time a model is mostly made of plastic, so it's only fair that I do it again here. For the record though, I don't think that makes a big difference to this model because the quality is fine and the weight is okay. And also, of course, the brake rigging touching the axles wouldn't be quite right if I give it the five on quality with that issue. Value for money, though, I am going to give five star. This is an expensive model, like I said earlier on. £45.95 is the RRP, and that is a lot to spend on a model. Same with the typical retailer price of £39.06. That's still the best part of £40. It's a lot to spend on a single piece of rolling stock. But you get what you pay for. The detail's there, the quality is there, the features are there. I don't have a problem with expensive models as long as the price is reflected in the model, and in this case it is. I can't think of any way that this model could have been better for the money, so I have given it five star there. Let me know what you think, do you agree? Overall then, that is a very, very high score of 9.31 out of 10, and a grade of A, very well deserved. It's a tremendous, tremendous model. And into the logbook it goes, yeah, that's not too surprising. Top place above the Athen Hoppers, it is kind of leagues above the other models that I've reviewed so far this year. And when you consider that the Backman Dancehall brake van is actually more expensive than this, even at the retailers, that's absolutely shocking because you get a lot more for your money here. So great work, Rapido. Can highly recommend this model. Well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another review. Yeah, this is one of the better pieces of rolling stock I've looked at this year. Very, very impressed with this. If you are interested in trying one of these for yourself or perhaps seeing what other different liveries and versions of this model are available, please do check the affiliate link down in the description and pick yourself up a really great model if that's what you decide to do. But for now, thank you again for watching. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you very, very soon for another review. 
All right, cheers, folks. Thanks for watching.